On January 2nd, 2023, romance author Susan Meachin dropped a bomb on the book world. She posted this on Facebook. I debated on how to do this a million times, and still not sure if it's right or not. There's going to be a ton of questions and a lot of people leaving the group, I guess. But my family did what they thought was best for me, and I can't fault them for it. I almost died again at my own hand, and they had to go through all that hell again. Returning to the ward doesn't mean much, but I'm in a good place now, and I'm hoping to write again. Let the fun begin. The problem, of course, is that Susan Meachin is supposed to have died in September of 2020. Now that her suicide has come to light, people have started going back through her old posts, analyzing them for any hints that this entire hoax was planned out from the beginning. As it turns out, dramatic, over-the-top, look-at-me posts were not particularly uncommon for Susan. Everyone, dollface, will be keeping the ward as I am taking my leave of the industry. Treat her with the respect she deserves. She put up with my bipolar ass for almost four years without a moment's hesitation along the way. For the ones who were here from the start, thank you for loving my twisted shit, but this is where I get off the ride. No one should want to die when they work for themselves, and every day I got to the point I'd rather be dead than to deal with the industry and the people who swear they are friends. I've had some dog-eat-dog -dog jobs in my life, but this one is by far the most vicious, with the least amount of money. Enjoy your time in this world, because trust me, not one of us is getting out alive, and not one book status will be spoken of once your last breath is drawn. Peace, love, and butterflies. This post was made just days before the announcement of Meechan's death. And once the hoax came to light, readers and authors, people who thought themselves to be Susan Meechan's friends, were rightly frustrated. So Kansas Adams responds with, Okay, serious question. Are you going to pay back all the authors who donated to the charity auction for your funeral, or should we retain lawyers for fraud now? And then the Meechan account responds, FYI, there was no fundraiser for me. Candace comes back with, there was a charity auction to pay for your funeral, to which I and many others donated. Do not make this another lie. There's a spreadsheet floating around that is tagged as tracking for a charity auction that was held to pay for Meechan's funeral expenses, but so far as I can tell, that's actually tracking for another charity auction that was held the year before in order to pay for Meechan's husband's surgery, which he may or may not have actually had. We'll talk more about that in a bit. Perhaps the most outspoken critic of this whole debacle has been Samantha Cole, and she had this to say about the whole thing. I'm not sure where to start. Last night, I got a message from Rhonda Butterbaugh asking if I remembered Susan Meachin. Of course I did. And within the hour, I was horrified, stunned, livid, and felt like I'd been kicked in the gut and the chest at the same time. I'm still sick to my stomach, and it's gotten worse. In September of 2020, Susan Meachin's daughter, supposedly it was her daughter, signed in her mother's profile and announced that Susan had taken her own life. Devastation from her friends, fellow authors, and readers followed. Allegedly, she'd been bullied in the book world to the point of suicide. What followed was rants from said daughter about how horrid the book world had been to Susan and the family wanting nothing to do with the book world from that point on. However, they wanted to honor their mother's memory by publishing the last book she wrote, which they did. Friends, authors, and readers shared the release. We grieve for the loss of the woman we'd considered a friend. I personally was harassed by another author who loves to create drama, claiming that I was one of the authors who bullied Susan and drove her to suicide. I was heartbroken when I realized that it had been a few months since I'd last chatted with Susan and PMs, and wish I'd reach out sooner and maybe it would have made a difference for her to know that there were people who supported her. Last night, a post was made in Susan's old reader group, the ward from Susan's profile, and I quote, and then it goes on to um, go over the post that Susan had made. Apparently, she's not dead. T.N. Steele was a profile she'd made a month after her alleged suicide. What follows are screenshots from the group, her profile, and the chat that I just had with the dead person. Excuse me while I now go get shit-faced in memory of co-workers and friends who I really did know who died. So after Samantha made this post, Meechan's account invited her to discuss it in private message. 
So before we get into these uh, DMs, I just want to say I did not clip them this way. These are the way that Samantha Cole published them on her first initial response to the situation. So Samantha says, what is going on? And Susan comes back with, nothing. I simply want my life back. My family was in a bad place and did what they thought was best for me. So Samantha says, by telling everyone you committed suicide? How is that the right thing to do in any situation? Your friends, author friends, and readers grieved for you. I was harassed by Dylan Cross, telling people I was one of the bullies who drove you to kill yourself. I am stunned and appalled that anyone would do this. I personally knew people who took their own lives. People I worked next to for years without ever knowing that they were fighting demons. I cried when I heard you had allegedly taken your life. I felt so bad that we hadn't spoken for a few months in the chats. I felt like I was kicked in the gut last night and wanted to throw up when I heard about your post. Who the hell pretends that a loved one committed suicide? Was it really your daughter making those posts, most of which seemed to have disappeared, calling out the bullies that drove you to suicide? Do you even have a daughter? I've spoken to several people who knew you two years ago, people who considered you a friend, and they are just as dumbfounded. How can you think the book world will just be like, oh, you're alive, welcome back? So Susan comes back with, I do have a daughter and a son. I'm not worried about the book world letting me back in. I was never really in. Notice that she completely skipped over the question of, was it really your daughter posting or was it you all along? So Samantha continues, all you had to do was say that you were leaving the book world and everyone would have respected that. But to have someone post that you killed yourself is disgusting. The betrayal I feel is beyond words. Why come back at all? Why not just stay under the alias you were using? I seriously hope you get help because you need it. Never in the past seven and a half years in the book world have I seen or heard anything this outrageous. You obviously didn't give a single thought about the people who considered you a friend before you pulled this stunt. And Susan responds with, I had no control over what my family did. I was in the hospital fighting for my life, but I understand what they did. Basically blaming it all on her family. And then Samantha comes back with, so you waited two years before letting anyone know that your family thought the right thing to do was to say that you were dead? Who does that? Was it so people would feel sorry for them and buy your books? And the answer is, yeah, kinda. Shortly after Susan Meachin's death, the Susan Meachin Facebook account, which was supposedly being controlled by her daughter, asked for help getting her last book published. The community of the ward came together, donating their time, effort, energy, and knowledge to the project, and the book was published at the end of October 2020. It didn't sell well, but given that it was intended as a tribute to her daughter's upcoming wedding, the sales of the book weren't really what was important, right? In the months that followed, the Susan Meachin account posted several more times, asking for advice on how to sell the Susan Meachin library more effectively, making an effort to publish a book about Susan Meachin's life and her struggles, and becoming more and more frustrated when their efforts at capitalizing on the situation were not turning out to be fruitful. While all of this was going on, Susan Meachin's fellow authors came together to publish an anthology dedicated to her imploring readers to leave bullying where it belonged, in fiction. In February of 2021, less than six months after Susan Meachin was reported dead, her Facebook account made a last-ditch effort to sell Meachin's books, saying it wasn't worth the time to continue working on them and that they would be pulled from publication shortly thereafter. And somewhere in this rough time, The Ward, which is Susan Meachin's Facebook group, was passed on to Connie Ortiz, who I've seen a lot of people say looked like she was related to Susan Meachin, maybe it was a sister or something. Connie's not related to Susan. Um, she also had a sister who died at roughly the same time or during this timeline. Um, and so people have, uh, because of the way that she phrased something, have made the connection thinking that she's Susan Meachin's sister. She isn't. So shortly after this original post blew up and the story started getting some attention, uh, not just from the book community, but from people all over the place, 
Samantha Cole posted a video where she sort of discussed some of her own thoughts and feelings about the entire situation. Good morning. Um, after the events of the last 36 hours and the response to the post that I made yesterday afternoon in regards to a author who allegedly unalived herself two and a half years ago, coming back to life and uh, trying to um, be well blase about it and, you know, blaming her family, thinking, saying that they were doing the right thing by telling everybody that she unalived herself in September of 2020. Um, I was friends with this author. I was not close friends with this author, but we chatted once or twice a month for quite a while. And um, I was devastated when I heard that she had allegedly committed suicide. There were a lot of posts on her wall, allegedly from her family, blaming the book world for bullying her mother to the point that she took her own life. Um, those posts are now gone. And there was an outpouring of outrage, support for those who were hurting, support for her family. Uh, people uh, did free editing on her last book so her family could release it for her. So this is where we start getting into the territory of fraud. And while I couldn't find any state or federal laws in the U.S. indicating that faking your own death is illegal, it is illegal to take money from people based on a false premise, such as in memoriam of a woman who isn't actually dead. There were people who were ripped apart because people started pointing fingers at everyone, um, blaming people. Samantha mentions here that she was one of the people being blamed for said bullying. And in another later post, she explains why people thought that. It boils down to a spoof post from years ago that appears to be a fraudulent account from September of 2021, a year after Susan Meachin's supposed death. Now, if Samantha really had said those things, that would be pretty egregious. Only, according to her, she didn't. I'm going to put this out there before anyone else has a chance to resurrect it on public feeds. I never said any of the vile things in this screenshot. And no one but the troll and his few minions and maybe a few people who don't know me at all believe that I did. So here, Samantha is categorically denying having said any of those things. Um, she's saying this is not her and that she is not responsible for the bullying that occurred or supposedly occurred against Susan Meachin that supposedly led to her death that never actually happened. The thing is, it's not just Samantha Cole and Candace Adams claiming that they contributed money for this charity fundraiser to fund Susan Meachin's funeral. Sai Marie also claims that she was taken advantage of in this way. I knew years ago to separate myself from Dylan Cross and his affiliates when I noticed a treatment of my colleague, Raven Heydrich. I'm not one to typically come on here and name and shame people as I prefer to keep a positive vibes hedge of protection around my business, my life, and my associates. However, I cannot sit by while my peers and I are coming to learn that Susan Meachin not only lied about her death, but had her family posed to gain free services to pay her for her funeral costs. And now, just over two years later, Susan is trying to return to the writing world when she was supposedly deceased. Now, knowing how Samantha Cole was falsely accused by Susan and Dylan has left me with no choice but to make my line in the sand firm. I have zero tolerance for taking advantage of my peers, lying to gain readership, and capitalizing off perpetuating a suicide as the cause of death for a known author. It is appalling and disgusting whatever has been done here, and as an advocate for mental health, a writer, and a disabled woman who has my own battles in this industry where giants make tons and I scrape by using my creativity and kindness to spread a message to a hurting world by providing entertainment and education, 
I am stunned. What Susan Meachin has done, and anyone who affiliates and associates with predatory and toxic bullying behavior and slanders and lies like this, has showcased towards Samantha Cole and the fact that I personally was taken advantage of by supplying services to help raise money for her funeral, that you are a scoundrel and deserve to never work another day in this industry for the rest of your life. Being manipulative and taking it upon yourself to construct such a vile and disgusting story, to make money for a fake funeral, is far-fetched enough to be a movie, and the fact that you did it is newsworthy. You should be wholly ashamed of yourselves if you support or engage in such despicable and heinous misconduct and abuse, and you should be sued for taking advantage of your peers and readers alike. While I know you may not be criminalized for this, you ought to be, because this is the behavior of a conniving monster. So while all these accusations of fraud are going around, there are also accusations of bullying and harassment, as well as false accounts being created to make it look like people are saying things that they aren't actually saying. And nobody seems to be able to tell how much is real and how much is made up. Not when this first happened in 2020, not in the two years Susan Meachin was supposedly dead, and not in the roughly two weeks since her announcement that she'd risen from the dead. And I, I, I feel I need to address some things that have come up in the comments, in the shared posts um, from my original post and, uh, and explain a few things. Um, first of all, her PA at the time, Connie, I reached out to Connie yesterday afternoon um, and I, I pretty much flat out asked her, did you know this was a hoax? So after a, a long conversation with her, um, I told her I was pretty much convinced that she was blindsided like the rest of us, that she did not know this. Um, this happened. Apparently her, uh, Susan's family never reached out to her in the weeks and months following the alleged um, death. So after Susan Meachin's supposed death, several people stepped in to sort of help keep the Facebook group alive that she was running and to sort of uh, carry on things in her memory. And one of those things was publishing and helping push the book that she had supposedly finished just before her, her death. And one of those people was Connie Ortiz, who was helping run the ward. So in October, a month after Susan's death, Connie wrote this in the Facebook group. Please share. Before Susan Meachin passed away, she had written her last book, Love the Last a Lifetime. She wanted to have it published by her daughter's wedding. This is it. It's in pre-order now from $1.99. Release date is October 30th, and there's links and all this other, you know, the blurb from the back of the book and all that. Two years later, Connie had to step down from the running of the ward due to personal things, and she posts this. Wow, it's been a while. I'm sorry for not being here as often as I should. My life has been a roller coaster this year. Taking care of my husband, my son's accidents, and my sister's death has kept me away from the group. I've been considering closing it down, but that would not be fair to you. If anyone wants to take over this group, please let me know. Susan Meachin worked hard to keep this group going, and it would be a disservice to her if I closed it. I'll be around once in a while. I have a lot of good friends that I don't want to break that connection with you. Just let me know if you want to take over this group. And that's where T and Steel comes in. Nobody knew at the time, but T and Steel was actually Susan Meachin. You can see this by looking at the group The Ward's name history. Way back in the day when the group was first created in February of 2018, it was called T and Steel's Hangout. It was changed to The Ward later on that year, and then after Connie Ortiz handed the reins of the group over to TN Steel, they changed the name back to TN Steel's Hangout, only returning it to the original name, The Ward, right before the post was made about Susan Meachin not actually being dead. A day before Susan Meachin's uh, resurrection post, if you will, TN Steel made a post on their account saying, this account will be closing soon, and I will return to my real account and name. If you would like to follow, let me know. And this was her way of letting everyone know, hey, I'm Susan Meachin. I've been here all along. 
Ha ha ha. So Tian Steele was actually Susan, pretending to be a new author. For two and a half years, she sat back and took on this whole new life, not telling anybody in the book world who she was, letting watching us grieve. Her and her family accepted um, free editing. They accepted uh, paint, donations for, for a funeral that never took place. Now, Samantha says here that her family accepted donations for a funeral that never took place. But so far as I can tell, we don't have any actual evidence that it was, in fact, Susan Meachin's family that did any of this. We know that it was someone posting through Susan Meachin's account claiming to be her daughter. But whether or not that was actually Susan's daughter or whether it was Susan Meachin herself, there's not really any way to tell. There were so many people grieving over this woman that we thought we had been friends with, who obviously didn't care about anybody's feelings before she did this. And to come back and then and say that her family thought it was a good idea, which blows my mind, to, to say that she had committed suicide because she had been in a bad place at the time. She had been in the hospital and she wasn't aware of it. Well, within a month, she was aware of it because she was making a new profile. The fact of the matter is, Susan Meachin has had over two years to come out and say, look, this is not true. I'm not dead. I'm right here. Everything's okay. I just needed to step back. And she didn't. She had the opportunity so many times to step forward and do the right thing, and she didn't. Her profile had been kept alive. Um, people posted on her, the anniversary of her death, that they still missed her. Um, and it, it, it just became this ongoing thing. I've seen screenshots from one author who thought he had be, been friends with, with Susan. Uh, she had given him advice about the book world, she, and he was very grateful for it. And he sent Susan's profile a message, hoping her family would see it. And it, the daughter basically got on there saying, thank you, you know, everybody's been so supportive. We really miss mom. We hope her legacy continues and, and stuff like that. I'm sorry. That is beyond psychotic. Uh, whether it was Susan herself or, or, or her daughter making these comments to, to knowingly mislead somebody who's grieving when you know that there's no reason for that person to be grieving. I, I, Glad that she is allegedly getting the help that she needs with a psychiatrist, but I cannot condone what she did, and I cannot forgive what she did. And uh, I hope the uh, the book world can heal from this, and um, it's going to take time. You know, we I I don't know who I can trust anymore. And this is about the time that Susan Meachin's spoof accounts started to crop up. People with the same logo and the same name, but not attached to the original account, and making posts on Susan Meachin's behalf or pretending to be her and posting really awful things to people. I know I said my last video would be my last video on this subject, but more things that have uh, come to light that need to be addressed. I was sent multiple screenshots. Well, actually, I should say I was sent one screenshot from multiple people last night. Um, it is a screenshot of a alleged chat between uh, Susan Meacham and, uh, and an unknown individual. It turns out that it was sent to an author uh, who I spoke to earlier in the week, and um, he, con he considered her a mentor and, and a friend. 
and he was devastated when he heard of her alleged death, and he ended up uh, dedicating his uh, his next book to her. Um, he received uh, a PM private message on Facebook from a uh, a woman claiming to, uh, with the name Samantha Land, L-A-N-D. And he had not known this woman prior to this uh, interaction. Um, he had never heard of her, had never seen her on, on Facebook. He was sent this and the woman, Samantha Land, apparently said that she saw this in a posted in a group. She took a screenshot of it and then uh, right after she took a screenshot of it, it disappeared. Now, um, I'm not sure which group this was allegedly posted in. Uh, the woman then claimed that her husband had died of suicide last year. This had triggered her and she was shutting down her account after immediately um, ending the chat with this uh, unsuspecting author. We are 100% um, her former editor, her uh, former PA, and several other people who knew her well uh, all do not believe this was Susan at all. This was a fabricated hoax. Uh, the response was definitely not her style. She could not understand how anybody could do this, um, uh, the, create these uh, elaborate hoax is just to further hurt people that are already grieving, that are already in pain. The thing is, this isn't the only fake Susan Meachin screenshot or uh, dialogue going on. Michael Gallagher from Upstream Reviews posted an interview that he had with Susan Meachin, in which she said some pretty appalling stuff. Once this was posted, it of course hit Twitter, and people absolutely lost their minds. Only for Upstream Reviews to come back a couple days later and retract the entire interview, saying they had no confirmation that this was actually Susan Meachin, and nobody really knew who it was that they were talking to. Michael Gallagher from Upstream Reviews did come back and make very clear that he was made aware that this interview wasn't legit and that the person he spoke to wasn't in fact Susan Meachin. The problem is, with so many fake accounts and so many people pretending to be other people, including Susan Meachin herself, how is anybody supposed to know what really happened? For whatever reason, they think it's, it's funny to um, start a rumor that is not true and people get hurt by this. Whatever you see on the internet, somebody created hiding behind a keyboard. They can make fake accounts. They can make fake screenshots. They can make false accusations. And I can go on and on and on, but just because you see it on the internet does not mean it's true. So as these allegations of fraud and fraudulent donations and fundraisers start to come out about the funeral, people start looking back in Susan Meachin's history and some of the other things that she had claimed to have money problems for uh, and claimed that she needed help for. Things like medical bills for herself and her husband. Also, we are, um, I am requesting myself and uh, at least one other author, we're uh, investigating the, um, the, donations that were made for several reasons. Uh, Susan claimed that her husband needed to have a mask removed from her from his head. I don't know the details of that. That's the only screenshot that I could find. And I believe they raised about $1,700 at, at the time. Um, we cannot find evidence of that actual uh, fundraiser taking place aside from a few screenshots, some of them made by Susan um, because uh, it was done in her group where she is an admin and uh, a lot of posts have been scrubbed out of her group. Uh, this event was scrubbed from her group. The one from 
that raised money supposedly for Susan's um, kidney issues, that she needed a kidney transplant and was not eligible for one. Uh, she did not need a kidney transplant. She was not on dialysis, as she claimed, for funeral expenses in September of 2020, or maybe even into October of 2020. Um, an author friend of mine uh, who did donate back then was able to go back into her face uh, into her PayPal account and find the transaction. It does say on there um, as a note to the family, sorry, basically sorry for their loss, and please accept this fifty dollars uh, towards her funeral expenses. This information is being mailed, uh, emailed to law enforcement in Tennessee. Um, another author I, I have been speaking to uh, over the past several days has been in contact with the authorities down there, and we are forwarding as much information as we can so that we can prove that um, there was an, an intent to, um, to uh, receive money um, on either Susan's behalf or Susan's family behalf. Um, so, uh, anybody that was scammed out of the money, um, could possibly get re restitution. I, I highly doubt, uh, that will happen, but, um, she needs to be held accountable. So Samantha's claiming that she spoke to somebody who knows Susan Machen in real life. Now, I don't know who this person is. I don't have any way to verify whether or not this is true, but here's the screenshots of that conversation. Hi, Samantha. I'm messaging you to find out how much was raised for Susan Meachin's fake suicide funeral. I do believe that criminal action should happen to recover the funds you and the group gave so generously. Samantha says, I have no recall or knowledge about those fundraisers everyone is mentioning. I have not seen the screenshots either. And then she starts talking about how she lost access to her account, which she's mentioned several times throughout this ordeal. Then this supposed real life friend says, First, I like to say it saddens me deeply that you had to go through this. Susan is known for her I am dying or going to commit suicide ploy. She has used those terms to manipulate and control her children, keeping them in a constant state of fear. Again, this is one of the things that makes people dubious on whether or not it was Susan Meachin's daughter or Susan Meachin herself that was posting through the Susan Meachin Facebook account the entire time she was supposedly dead. When I first read the post yesterday, my first reaction was, I'm not surprised. If I had read a couple of years ago that she had posted her death, I would have cleared that up quickly. And then there's a portion of it blocked out. This is possibly the lowest act of selfishness and diabolical act anyone could do to another human being in the name of art. Do you remember seeing a GoFundMe page? And then Samantha says, no, I don't remember. Some people have told me that they suspected this was a hoax in the beginning, but if they even hinted at that, they were shredded by the community, so they kept their mouths shut. Yesterday, I found out she was making posts in pet groups and has a TikTok account where she posted videos with her face showing. And that was actually mentioned in a newspaper article or an online newspaper article uh, that she had this TikTok where she was posting the entire time. So then this supposed friend says, did you work on her book, editing and whatnot? No, another person did. Let me try and remember who it was from my chats. Do you know SM in real life as well as the book world? And the woman says, real life. I only knew she had written a few books. She is something. And then Samantha says, oh, fuck. And then this person comes back with, yeah, that's the response anytime I hear her name. And Samantha says, I don't blame you. I'm chatting with another author who was contacted by some bit that was broken out. May I ask who they spoke to? And Samantha tells them. And then this person goes, well, she definitely would have had a different perspective. All of Susan's blood relatives have nothing to do with Susan. Except it was supposed to be Susan's daughter who was posting via her account this entire time. Again, leading people to believe it was actually Susan Meachin pretending to be her daughter. I was contacted by a Tennessee news station about the whole Susan ploy. I did share your name with them since I'm not part of the indie group. I just wanted to give you a heads up. I hope that's okay. 
And Samantha says, yeah, they just contacted me. Can you find out if Susan had health issues in the past, mainly lupus and kidney problems that needed a transplant, but she wasn't eligible because of the lupus and if she was getting dialysis? I highly doubt it, but before I make my post about a fundraiser that was held in her in the book world in 2019, I want to make sure it's not true. And this is where this person comes back and says, she has had lupus. This is the disease she had her kids believing that she's going to die at any moment. So her kids grew up thinking they were going to lose her any moment, even though the research says that less than 10% of lupus patients die from the autoimmune disease. Kidney transplant. I know she's had female issues, and I believe she also had some kidney issues like kidney stones. I pass kidney stones all the time. As far as we know, she's never needed a kidney. And then Samantha shares the screenshot from the Facebook events where people were raising money in order to um, get Susan Meachin this kidney transplant that she supposedly needed at the time and that this person who claims to know her in real life says she never actually had. So Samantha comes back and says, so never getting dialysis, never needed a transplant or any experimental treatment. And this person who claims to know her in real life says, not to my knowledge, was this auction pre-suicide post? I asked somebody who is apparently relevant, but we don't know who it is. And she said she was never told about any kidney failure. And Samantha says, 2019, did she have cancer at one point? Also, did her husband require surgery in 2018 slash 2019 that insurance wouldn't pay for? There was another fundraiser for that, and she got $1,700 for that one and $400 for her kidney one. And this, this person comes back and says, no on the cancer. Troy, Susan's husband, did have back surgery, but I never heard that insurance wasn't paying for it. Were you able to find the funeral auction? Samantha says, still looking, still looking for the auction to raise money for his surgery too. Did her husband have a mass on his head that needed surgery to be removed? That's why they raised money for it in May of 2020. And then we see this post from Lorraine Latham, which I'll share on the screen here, talking about uh, needing help to cover medical bills so Susan Meachin's husband can have a mass removed from his head on June 8th. And it says very clearly they have to pay the surgeon and surgical unit up front for the surgery. And this person comes back and says, nope, no head surgery. Why would he have to prepay for a head mass? Why indeed. If they did have to pay up front, it wasn't a life or death situation. That's how the U.S. medical system works. Looks like Susan has been hosing the group for a long time. And then Samantha comes back and says, she's deleting shit, so we're trying to get to it before she does. I'm not sure that the person operating the Susan Meacham account understands that Facebook works in conjunction with law enforcement, and if criminal fraud charges are actually filed, those records will be subpoenaed and they're just going to dig all this stuff up. So Samantha says she told her editor she had gone through cancer, which is why she was able to write a book on it. And this supposed person who knows her in real life says, that woman hasn't worked a day since 2000. She receives disability there, for she receives federal and state health benefits. I don't know if 2000 is correct, but she has not held a job in a very, very long time, which is not particularly uncommon for people suffering from lupus. She had government insurance, so this is back in regards to whether or not her husband's surgery would have been covered. And then Samantha asks, is Nasus really her daughter's name? And this person says, yep, it's true, only someone like Susan. That is one of her greatest achievements and one of her daughter's frustrations because it gets misspelled all the time. And this is Samantha explaining to the woman that she intended to use her posts and make them public. She says, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna say that you know her personally and that you're from the same small town where everyone knows everyone, but I'm not saying how you know her to protect your identity because this way I have visual visual contradictions to some of the fundraisers. And this person says, that works. She's cried wolf so many times that her own flesh and blood don't want anything to do with her. Personally, I think she's the most vile person I've ever met. So here's where all this shakes out. The fact that Susan Meachin died and that bullying accusations were thrown around did stir up the author community in 2020. But the fact that she's come back from the dead and is now pretending like everything's fine and that it really isn't that big of a deal is even more impactful. Not because people are upset, 
but because it plants the seed of doubt in people's minds. It starts making people question other people's motivation. And it makes all of us that little bit more callous towards people who really are hurting and really are in need. And that is really unfortunate. I'm pretty new to the author community. I've only just started writing in the past year. And I have found the people here to be really warm and open and inviting, really, really interested in what you're doing and really interested in discussing ideas and sharing what they've learned on their writing journeys. And any action that makes people less willing to be that open, less willing to be that welcoming of new players on the field, is a travesty. What Susan Meachin did is absolutely unconscionable. I think Candace Adams summed it up pretty well in an interview she did with CNN. I think some people are trying to defend her, saying she obviously has some issues and we should be considerate about that, Cole says. Which is true, but she also hurt people and lied to people. I don't think she has any remorse or any sense of the pain and betrayal she's caused. That camaraderie is really threatened. We're used to offering support and help whenever someone asks. But now, there's a sense of, what if they're lying? Connie Ortiz said to CNN, I've lost a lot of trust in the industry. Friends who I thought were friends really are not. And that's the worst part of it all. It gets harder and harder the older you get to make friends. The only takeaway I think that there is to gain from all of this is be wary, but don't let people like Suchin Meechin ruin your trust in humanity. For every one of her, there are dozens, hundreds of other people who are genuine good people with similar interests and similar mindset to you. Find those people, invest your time and effort and energy in those people, and let people like Susan fall to the wayside.